Today we're checking out Foundation. This is a medieval settlement builder simulation by Polymorph Games, first released in 2019. Uh, famously covered by Let's Game It Out, but we're checking out version 1.9, which has, or 1.9.1, .1, which features a brand new map generator, and it has proc gen. And this is a, a settlement that I've kind of created in about three hours. This video is going to be indexed to some degree, but I would like to just sort of give an overview right now, and we'll intro, and then I'll kind of hold your hand through what it's like to start Foundation. I thought that would be a good way to do it, because this is a game I've always kind of wanted to check out. Disclosure, I did receive a key to this uh, for free from the devs. Uh, they're very nice people. Uh, but yeah, no, they were pretty excited about that update, so I think we'll do a little bit of time highlighting that, but just kind of going on about the game in general. Um, we did a bit of a tutorial town here, and we've got taxation going on. I've got on some of the view visibility on this map. I, can I turn this off or down? If I turn off this visibility, I think that this game, I mean, I personally think that it is very, very amazing to look at. That is to say that it is beautiful, and I don't call many things beautiful, but when I do call them beautiful, you know that I really mean it. We've got a farming zone in yellow, although we don't have enough farm hands to tend to the entire area. We are growing and regrowing trees. All of these have been dynamically placed by our foresters in the woods. And I really would describe this game as watching a medieval town developed sort of organically, albeit you have the fun of painting zones, which is quite nice because I can erase this zone and I can make it smaller or larger like this. It's kind of like MS Paint for adults. Uh, because of course I don't spend all my time on MS Paint. Um, anyway, but I, what I would say like as a really quick two minute review is um, really ridiculously beautiful. I, I would consider this game very accessible, but I wouldn't be fooled by the good graphics as sometimes that generally tends to be that there's not a lot going under the hood because it does seem that there's quite a lot going under the uh, going on underneath the hood of this game so to speak where you can control all of the little systems and it's very satisfying to have your tax collector go around and here's my tax collector right here my tax collector is just standing at the door oh no but now he's going out to collect of course the taxes from all of the people who don't really want to pay them and he goes from door to door and he takes their money look he's getting gold doubloons put into his hand right now and I think that's amazing but, um, yes, don't be fooled by the good graphics because there is a lot under the hood here. A lot of these g buildings have sort of been generated ant farm style, like, organically. Although many of them I placed myself. Like, for example, if we go over to the farms, I hand-placed the, uh, what is this, the farm, the mill, and then the bakery. I did hand-place all of those. With my own hand, of course. But, um, yeah, it, I mean, it's it, it's not on a grid, so it's kind of modern in that way. Kind of like Roller Coaster Tycoon versus Planet Coaster, I sort of think of this as the modern updated version. I can't think of an old game to compare this to right off the top of my head. Uh, but, yeah, it, it doesn't, it still doesn't feel all over the place. It's kind of hard to describe, but all of these roads organically make themselves. Like, I didn't path any of these roads uh, but then I told them to replant the trees in here, and this is a very satisfying, very much a relaxing type of chill, laid-back settlement builder. I don't get a lot of urgency from this, although I did complete only the tutorial. But, uh, yeah, very laid-back, relaxing, a bit like Banished comes to mind. Uh, but one thing I'm kind of trying to figure out is where is, like, the character, or something that's really memorable about this game. Like, uh, like in RimWorld, there's so many tropes that there are, but, you know, just... Something, I, again, I compare a lot of... I compare pretty much every simulation game to RimWorld, so I apologize for that. But yeah, um, uh, I would like to see a bit more of a la of a sense of urgency with, like, the military. We've hand-built all of these buildings kind of my Sims style. That's what comes to mind, or the Sims, uh, where I have actually built the fortified keep. I built the, the building, and then I put a roof on it, or you could put a watchtower on top in this system. I'll show this really quickly. Um, like, you can put a banner on one of these points. Um, or I didn't really do it right right here, but I could put a, something on the side of a house. Very cool systems, though. Very satisfying to build in this game. And there's a lot of emergent structures and things like that. Anyway, I'm getting more into, like, the deep systems, and watching the whole civilization develop is quite satisfying. But, uh, yeah, pretty straightforward, and I would say easy to pick up. Not a huge learning curve, but let's get into it, and let's start from scratch and make our own settlement from the very beginning. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and turn back on notifications for a second, because I've had Twitch chat silenced here, because I was speaking in my massive intro monologue. 
Um, let's go back out to the main menu. I'm not really going to save this one because we were just sort of looking at the village right here. My god, this game is quite beautiful, though. Okay, so I'm assuming that this is what the devs were talking about with the procedural maps. And this is in beta, so there was supposedly more that was going to be added to this. But I assume, since I hadn't tried it before, that these were just static maps. But now they can be randomized, so... Like this, generate, 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 and oh my gosh, it's like there's an infinite number of maps. And you would be right, there's almost an infinite number of maps. Uh, but, yeah, you can keep going back. I, I, let's try something slightly different, because we were on Coastal just there before. Um, but yes, I will take any back seating if you want, although I will probably go my own way a little bit. I think we want some water, because that does seem to... These are the original maps, so let's go ahead and do... Let's do Fluvial! Because why not have a bridge there and try to get some more interesting architecture? Maybe there will be a greater sense of urgency as well. No mods found. Oh, I did not even begin with the mods because I have been playing vanilla. Because I am very plain, of course. I loved Foundation a year ago. It looks like it changed it. Apparently there have been a lot of changes, so I can't really speak to them as much because this is my first time playing Foundation. Mm, I think I will take the advice here. This is sort of the tutorial. However, is this going to make it easier? It's a very light tutorial, so I am going to leave it like that. Only because it's going to sort of tell me the order of things, but I'll see if I can get through it on my own. So we want to pick a decent starting location. I'm pretty sure that... Oh no, these don't spawn. We need berries for food, and we need rocks, which yes, these rock nodes just sort of stay there forever. Um... So you buy a territory and you're sort of buying up all the land as you. I think I want to be kind of riverside. This location seems to have a little bit of everything. And also there is value to having fields because that makes them more fertile for farming later on, I do believe. Um, no, I don't seem to be able to purchase all of the territories. Amazing. All right, well, this looks like quite a natural place to put a fort. Uh, I guess I would want to go sort of on high ground. I'm not sure if that's going to affect it at all, but I'm thinking of, like, Fort Ticonderoga, where they defended their um, their home with pencils would, of course, be a great place to begin. So let's put this here. Uh, choosing the territory, placing the village center. I'm pretty sure we're just going to do this and ignore what's on the side here, but it is going to be guidance. Now, the village center is going to be the place where we get all of our gathering. We're going to start off with sort of industry here. Then they'll get housing and stuff like that. But I'm seeing resources that we'll need here. So let's build this sort of close to the top of the hill, and I figure that housing will then kind of go out uh, up and in here, and we could use this wood for housing as we start to buy this territory. But we'll chop down this forest, and we'll put this right about, I think, here looks good. So we'll build that. And wow, people just teleport in there. That's amazing. Um... We would have placing the village center, although next we can do nothing to report, nothing to report. Uh, the next thing we want to do it. Let me just try continuing it on my own. Okay, so then it totally unlocks all of the structures. That's way more amazing. This is actually much better because I do somewhat know what I'm doing, although there are probably mass massive gaps in my knowledge. Let's feed them. I'm going to hold down control to rotate this. This took me a little while, but you've got all of your directions there. This game is just very well documented, it seems to me. But yeah, we'll put the gathering hut right there. And pretty much what we're doing is we have 10 unemployed, lazy villagers who just scream DreamWorks to me. Or Pixar, or I don't know. Maybe they're just, maybe just every three-dimensional person makes me feel like a child again. But yeah, waiting for a builder. Oh, so we don't have a builder's hut, so let's go ahead and do that really fast. And they do have, it is like, it's very cute. It's very cute. No one, we, no one is disputing this, the cuteness of the game. But we need to build a builder's hut because otherwise we won't have that at all. And that would be quite bad. Although I am quite overwhelmed by the number of things that I need to do here. Uh, that's technically not under resource collection. I'm guessing this is under logistic. Yeah, there we go. Builder's workshop. Yes, of course. A builder wouldn't subject himself to the primitive lodgings of a hut. So let's put that somewhere centralized. I'm thinking like here-ish. Because we'll probably radi radiate out from outside of here. And we can always get more. We'll hire two people. Uh, or even three for now as builders. We are currently paused. Why are we paused? 
Gather his hut. There we go. Let's do this. One times speed. Um, so here we go. We've got painting to do. We're going to extract. Let's do the berries first. Because they need to build that. But also, too, they don't have any supplies from the forest. So let's go ahead and get some more resource production. We're going to need a stonecutter's camp around here. And then we'll extract that from the forest. And you do need to paint these, and this is very easy to forget. So be careful with that. Okay, so let's do a lumber camp as well, and we'll also do that in sort of a centralized location. There we go. Hmm. The women's... Yeah, they have sort of an attitude. The women have their hands on their hips, sort of like they're expecting something, and the men just look very confused. Like, frighteningly so. Like, they might have enter a murderous rage at any moment. Like, perhaps a bit too content, although they do have names. Can we change their names? We can rename them. Now, this is one thing that I'm not entirely certain about, but it seems as though they are less efficient when I don't feed them. It's not like total survival, like, oh, if you don't feed them, they'll starve to death. So that was a thought when I began this. It doesn't seem like it's hardcore, everyone's gonna die. Which honestly might be kind of a vibe. Like, that, that might be interesting and fun to see. Um, not saying that I would enjoy watching cute little villagers die, but yeah, like that. Maybe they should consider it. <laughs> Here we go. So we're, we're not going to fully hire out everyone, but good, you're working on that. Now we're getting stone. We haven't even totally listed all of the resources available because the game is very good at kind of holding your hand and not giving you an overwhelming information at all at once. So, hmm, have we designated all of the extraction? We've designated that extraction, but I forgot to designate the forest extraction. So let's say we want to clear off the area on top of the hill, and I imagine we'll want to have housing here. We'll pretty much just want to do take down all of the woods here. This is very sloppy of me, but after all, I am a slob, so we'll just leave that there. That's pretty good. Now, one thing I'll say about this game is it's very much what you see is what you get. And I like the fact that villagers, like when you go back here, let's track this villager. 16 food, now 17. So it's not like a flow, but actually when any villager goes back to the hut, it does tick up or it increments the amount of supply that we've got. I sometimes feel like games that are very beautiful like this don't go that extra mile. Um, I don't want to name names of games that didn't do this when I was hoping that they would. <laughs> but yeah, there have been some out there, uh, <laughs> uh, and this is not one of them. Yeah, no, but I, I like very much that they have gone that extra length to make sure it's not just a flow and actually everything is as you see it. Um, we'll assign a couple of miners. Now, one thing that is a little confusing to me is that these nodes, at least as far as I've experienced them, have never run out. The other thing, too, is that I can't seem to differentiate stone gathering, berry gathering, and so on and so forth. So it's just sort of like an extract button, but it is what it is, as my father said. Um, okay, so we're also going to start to need to reforest this, because eventually we will start to cut down all of the trees. Now, when you get one wood, do you actually down this tree, or do you get one wood from... Yeah, so he totally takes down the tree. That's so sad and unfortunate. Wow. I'm actually crying copious tears right now. But, um, well, it's okay, because we can undo that with this forester camp. And that's just completely amazing. Now, which side is the front? That's the entrance... And see how the paths are starting to organically develop? To me, that's extremely satisfying. Oh, that's nice. So we'll get a forester camp, although this is all costing us maintenance. So you see each building has... costs zero to maintain this, zero to maintain this, but the forester camp starts to cost money. Uh, so we're going to run out of money. One wood is one tree. Yeah, but the trees are pretty easy to regrow, and like the rate of growth is quite high. It doesn't like stack up to real life. We'll also get, um, well, they're going to need to live somewhere, and we're going to need to well as well. I'm hoping I'm doing all this in the right order, but I was thinking that we could cut down these forests and have them all live here as they slowly take it down. Um, and we'll probably put that near the village center, because we want to keep things close together. Uh, we will get these long trains that make things inefficient as we go. Uh, where is the chaos, the civil unrest, how you turn... It does feel very peaceful. I kind of agree with you a while, Josh. Like... 
maybe that is to my own detriment, but also to taxation becomes a problem. And the great economic collapse of, of the empire is probably going to be upon us sooner than I would care to mention. So like it may seem civil and quiet right now, but it's definitely not like a they are billions type of game, I would say. Um, I, I think that's kind of low hanging fruit. For me to say that, but that would be a game in which urgency was of the utmost importance. Um, but I would say that it takes about two to three hours to figure that out, so it would be nice if there were a little bit more urgency there. However, the taxation actually did get me quite like he did before. So we've got Gathering Hut, we've got Sawmill. Let's do a sawmill because we are eventually going to need these planks and um. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't want to not have those, so let's do that. We are going to need to keep assigning people to this, so let's assign just one forester. That's usually enough, and you don't need to spend a lot on that. I will say that the resource, like, extraction is extremely well balanced. And at no moment did I feel like that this game was unfair with anything. And just look at this, how satisfied I am when I'm painting these zones. Oh my gosh, it's almost like the Airbnb symbol, except that it's just a triangle that's slightly rounded. I wonder if we could create our own Airbnb. You and me. You, me, and Dupree. Okay, so they do start to get into things like a church. They need religion. Otherwise, everyone's gonna lose it. So we'll do that. We'll get a, um, what was that? My reforestation zone? Okay, so what I really wanted to do was the residential zone. And let's make this just a little bit smaller. We do get desirability here. I'm assuming that this is because of the well nearby that they want to live here, so this seems pretty good to me. Why does it tell me low desirability, though? It just tells me low desirability everywhere. So let's go ahead and maybe shrink down the... Nope, it thinks everywhere is low desirability, but I'm assuming that green means good. So yeah, let's do that. Although, yeah, I probably wouldn't want to live near the stone camp. Oh my gosh, we're creating houses in what appears to be the Airbnb symbol. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my gosh. Wow. Amazing. Hey, what's up, I'll review or anything? Industri yes, the industrial buildings do seem to lower desirability. So one thing that I think is quite amazing, as I was saying before, is that just as soon as I paint the zone, I didn't order the construction of this house. But two people have decided to make this house. Is this like a, a couple or something? Basilin, serfs are satisfied. I don't even know if pregnancy or like villager marriage works in this game, but I'm assuming that this is a couple because it's husband and wife. I'm not sure if that's a mechanic that's planned or if it is, exists. To be fair, there are wide gaping gaps in my knowledge. Um, so like, excuse me for that. Food production. I think we've got all the things that we pretty much could unlock right now, though. Do we have the manor house? So the manor house is going to be the place where we have all our offices and stuff like that. So I think I'll put this... Uh, well, we'll put it near the houses because this place is going to be responsible for taxation eventually. And we want to make it easy for the tax collector to get from house to house. Uh, because that's pretty much what this entire game is about, of course. Let's... Uh, we'll call this... This is going to be the Great Hall. And then we'll build a tax office as an auxiliary building onto it. I feel so well-spoken. Wow. Can you guys sense how in very intelligent I am after just a couple of hours of playing this game? Sometimes it amazes me. So I guess we'll put this entrance here. I truly don't know if I totally messed this up. Place where visitors patiently wait until you decide to hear them. Oh, I'll put it at the front door anyway. Good enough. Ready to build. Now, one thing that kind of threw me off is that sometimes the window will go out of frame here, so you need to go to hit build. Uh, we'll give them some time to do this, because I've given them quite a lot to do here. And there are only two unemployed people in the building. Scroobies, welcome in. Yeah, so the tax collector is... No one likes the tax collector in this game, and they all become very unhappy when they get taxed. But we're going to go ahead and assign some resources here to our grain... Uh, I always thought that was granary, because they stored grain in it, you know? But I've, I'm told it's granary. I think it's granary. I've only seen it written, and I've never heard it pronounced over the course of many years, so... Please excuse me for being an uncultured swine. However, um, do we have a warehouse here? 
Yes, of course. None of them enjoy being taxed, um, which is why they move from, well, wherever they, they move from, um, which is pretty much like the American way, I suppose. I believe it is grant. Yeah, it's like grannies, like granny stories. That's fair. That's a good way to remember it. Or like, you know, the way that you remember how to spell dessert is you want two helpings, so you spell dessert with two S's. And desert is spelled with one S. Well, uh, fascinating. The fascination of the English language aside. So now here we're starting to see more trees get replanted. And oh my gosh, they're like tiny bonsai. What the hell is that sound? This is like Fargo. This lady's going to throw them all into the wood chipper, I bet you. Uh, sorry, I spoiled that movie if you've never seen it. But look at how nice it is to watch everyone building on a hill. I feel serotonin being released from my brain, and I'm loving it, honestly. Now, we do have an economy, though, as well. Can I expand the economy? I cannot, unfortunately. So now you may have noticed that several new resources have appeared here, namely tools. I think we can start to get... Oh, I forgot to do my market. How could I be so daft as to have forgotten a market? Or did I put this here? Oh, we'll put it near the food and stuff. Select a function. This is going to be a market stalls court, I believe. And then we put in the market stall and we'll put the entry there. Yeah, okay, finally I did this right. I think I really messed it up in my old village. And then we want a tent for it. Because, of course, we need that. Now we've got some planks getting made, but I'm thinking that we've got one unemployed person. We probably want yet even more planks. And let's just take a second, pause AA, you've been doing a lot of stuff, and let's see what's happening. Let's look at the workflow resources management of this village. Okay, um, mandates available at the Great Hall, construction minus 80, quest 100, monthly report. We do get a monthly report, so it's very much like that kind of Lords and Villains style. Although I think that this game came out first, but that was the one I played. Construction is very expensive, but our upkeep is very low, so we have this great... Uh, treasury of gold. However, we are slowly draining it away. So eventually we're going to need to get taxation going, which is why I want to get this manor hall going. Uh, because basically gold is... Well, gold is important, obviously, as it has been in throughout uh, human civilization. Good work, harder, ladies. Wait, is that a man? Sorry. No, I do believe that is a woman. How is she doing that one-handed... I mean, the animations I didn't even begin to comment on. Like, that is so meme and ridiculous. <laughs> oh my god. What happened to her wrist? <laughs> Not I mean, you know, as, as ridiculous as that is, like, look at how beautiful the blur is in this. Oh god. Like that, there's the, I can't remember what you call that, radial blur? Is it radial blur? No, there's something else uh, that's the proper name for it in, like, photography. Can't remember what you call that, but yeah, that is quite nice to see. All right, so the Great Hall, let's make sure that we've got enough of this. We did need tools to build this. We can get a market going later on um, and start to import more goods. But actually, can we do that right now once we get up that market stall? That's mainly for selling food to our villagers. Depth of field. Thank you very much. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, you get it on like a very nice long camera lens. There's very much of that in this game, and it is quite beautiful. Also, the color palette is quite amazing, but I think that's kind of speaks for itself. Anyway, so let's go ahead and look into churches, because eventually they're going to need to worship someone. Uh, and I think putting that near our residences is going to be our best bet. So I figure our residences will kind of come around here eventually. Because I think I'm going to build them on the extremities. And this is quite nice, getting a radial workflow out for our village. Oh my gosh, wow. So let's eventually just tell them to expand into these woods and around here. Let's just make this slightly larger. They're, they're, oh, too large. Okay, there we go. That's just right. Goldilocks brush size. There we are. Wow, we bought a lot of land. Holy cow. Somebody's going to get angry at us for how much land we bought. All right, we'll leave it there. Now that's good, that's done. And we could tell them to deforest these forests, but I think I'm going to leave them there simply because I like them, although it may be harming us in some way, honestly. I personally just like the look of them. 
And since it's laid back, I don't really see any reason to optimize. Um, let me see. Let's go ahead. Mandates. No, not mandates. That's not what I needed. Uh, edit building. I need a tax office ASAP because... So we need another room and we need more worker capacity. So I'm going to put a wooden hall right here. And I suppose that will be the best location because then the tax collector will go out and then take everyone's money. And I do believe that we need another door on that, right? Yeah, then we get the build option and then I can do that. Tax office is going to require a little bit more upkeep because it costs money to take everyone's money. Um, okay, so let's just look at resources, guys. Everyone's not going to die because we have 105 berries, and of course that's enough. Yes, very aesthetic. That's, that's what I meant to say. Is there diplomacy? There are, like, neighbors that we can make deals with, although I've not interacted with them much. We have soldiers. Sometimes they do escorts, but I've not had any combat. Uh, I've not gotten up to the real use of the military, but I figured after three hours, I might as well just start streaming because I don't know how long I would be there. Military doesn't seem to be the primary focus, at least based on my first check of the game. Um, so we've got some food. Although these people aren't eating food, they're getting water from the well because, of course, that's free. Their needs... So what does it do? Minus 25% what? Oh, this is happiness. So you have 50% happiness. Workplace is 35 meters from home, so we really want to optimize these distances. Um, oh, that would be nice. We're sort of doing that. Keep things close together. Um, food would be good. Let's have some of that. So let's have a market tender. Although we don't have anyone available. We will start to get more migrants. And oh my gosh, some people are requesting an audience. And that means we have two more villages. So we'll then assign one of them to be a market tender. Although that wouldn't have been so bad, even if we can do it. Uh, and we'll assign berries to this market stall. So now, throughout the day, the work day, people should go and pick up some berries from here at the market stall. But they also want services. So is this our... No, this is our house. So before they go ahead and build houses right over where I was going to build a church, let's go ahead and put our rustic church. I would say centralized, since we're going to have everyone here. Maybe we won't even get there. Let's put it, like, here. Because I don't want it to be too far from my starter village. But then we'll put that... Oh my god, that's a huge church. And we want to make a little bit of room because we might build add-ons to this church. So we'll put on... What do we even need? We need a door and a bell tower. So we'll just do the minimum right here so we don't have to spend too many resources. Um, personally, I think that's a good look. Like, slightly asymmetrical. And let's put the door on this side. Looks very sort of gothic. Yeah. That's the word I'll use to describe that. As everyone worships the flying spaghetti monster in this game. That's, uh, after all, there is only one plate of pasta worth worshipping, and that Being is fun. the Pastafarian one. Sup, love. Thank you very much for the sub. I feel actually, well, I'm going to take that to depth. I would say laid back right now. And this is partly to my own detriment because I play so many simulation games, but I feel kind of more laid back right now. Um... However, I'm kind of searching for that sense of urgency. Like, when do I enter a state of flow? And I, I think that I very much enjoy watching things built. And that, to me, that's what is the big sell on this game. I, I think that's very exciting. Like, look at this. This was all sort of organically, like, created. And that's amazing. I think it's very visually beautiful. But yeah, like, it would be kind of interesting if there were invaders or something like that. Or more of them maybe a little bit earlier on. Or just some quick way of getting that started. So I kind of do feel that way. We will be getting military force, though. So let's let's be patient. Let's be patient, of course. Although at times it does take a lot of that. It's a virtue, though. Okay, so another thing is that houses start to become more complex. Like, how many people are in your house? You have four out of six, but these just sort of build themselves, although they do require resources. Okay, so now the greatest thing happens is that we assign a tax collector. And can I actually visualize this tax collection? Um, I do believe building overview. Here we go. Taxes. Okay, so this kind of went right over my head because this looks like a meter that you can't control, but I couldn't see this. So this is how we set taxes. We need to click on this. And let's go ahead and analyze our budget. So every month... We're spending six gold on upkeep. Expenses are quite high. 
or that's not really that high, but we spend one on our forester camp. I don't really know why these are assigned these amounts. Maybe because they're like more advanced functions. The very primitive things don't require gold upkeep. I suppose that should be somewhat obvious because what happens if you get stuck? <laughs> um, but yeah, like houses don't require anything, but houses generate taxes. So stored tax, they can store up to 14. So this kind of encourages you to be efficient in your tax collection because if you can't get to the house by that time, then you, I guess you, they run out of money. I don't know. I don't really know what happens, but yeah, there's no real bank. So we've assigned a tax collector, and who is our tax collector? Mirielda, who is a serf and wants to go to a service. So I suppose that she's inside of the tax collection office right now, in the void of a black hole that is the door. Uh, and yeah, she's having a great time in there. But are we? How do we display this again? I may just totally have forgotten how to display this. Anyway, you can start to see, like I had before, how the gold is above their houses. I'll see if I can find that. Um, but anyway, you get weekly and monthly reports, very much like a ledger. This month we have negative eight for our upkeep, so our upkeep keeps going up. And um, construction, we did spend that individually on some buildings. So we want to get at least a decent flow a little bit over our upkeep. So I'm going to go in here, and that was our budget. Now, it does reduce unhappiness, so I'm going to slide this ticker over. And now we're collecting 30 a month, and we've only made people slightly unhappy. And that's sort of okay, but I'm going to make them... Well, we'll keep this because I haven't really seen the spiraling population unhappiness thing happen. Uh, and we'll also pay some more money. Here's our tabs. I do think that this this menu is, to me, a bit much. Like, having everything in one book... There's a lot in this menu, and it would be nice to me if there were separate buttons here to open up these different things so that I don't have to go book and then do it. Um, just a thought that I had, because it took me a little while to discover this, because this doesn't really look very clickable when you first see it. Um, we also have trade routes getting unlocked. I suppose we'll do this because it's quite useful, so then we can buy tools and start to exchange for goods that we don't have. Eight months of froggy um, streams. Oh, very, very nice. Hey, Wanderlust, thank you very much for the sub. As well as Kibble Dog from before. I'm sorry, I missed that one. Um, Kingdom Prospect here reached. We do have, like, Splendor, Wealth, Population. All of these things are going up as well as we do all of this. Like, all of this is sort of the, the meat and potatoes of what we're grinding. But it is unlocking higher things for us. So, we don't have a service, so that's making everyone very unhappy. The taxes are making people unhappy. And no one likes it here. A newcomer is available for our audience. I would like it if these people just sort of joined, but I guess you can kind of control your population this way. We'll also build a warehouse, which will be near our industries. I sort of screwed myself here by putting my village center right there. So let's go ahead and buy more territory. I'm pretty sure we get this one for free. Because we seem to get uh, two of them for free, so we'll just do that. Oh my gosh, a mineral deposit was discovered. Right there, beneath the shade of that tree. Beautiful. Beautiful blue shadows in this. I'm sorry, I can't comment on how, how beautiful it is. But yeah, I mean, like, I think that's fair. I, I do... I do think that this game has so many things down pat that make it, like, a really beautiful game when you see it on Steam. And I'm like, oh, wow, I really want to try that out. But I'm kind of like, where is the kind of sense of urgency in the game? So, like, where is the military? And maybe that's such, like, a, a kind of a, a boyish thing to say. Where is the military combat? Every game needs to have combat. And to be fair, when I was a kid, I went through all of my Nintendo DS games, of which I had a great large collection. But uh, I realized that almost every game in my library was about fighting. Like, there are very few games in your Steam library, or whatever you use, that are not about fighting. The one thing I'm trying to figure out, though, here is... I just zoomed in on newcomers who are somewhere else in the region. I am able to scroll off the map into the infinite blue here. For some reason right now. I don't know if this is a dev thing, and this is very confusing because I basically ruined my save and made this just a distant and faraway land, but that was quite terrifying, so yes, it would be nice if... Or at least I can't figure out where to how to get back to my main village, so now we just need to go sort of find it here. And look, there it is! We're back home, and that's great. And let's never do that again. Uh, yeah, it's sort of like if there's no conflict, there is nothing really... Uh, 
Nothing really shaking there. So it would be nice to see a little bit more urgency. Um, ongoing construction, although like all of the feeds in this game as to what's going on are beautiful. And you know, I haven't had any craziness of people like going crazy and fighting each other. Although maybe some of that would be kind of fun. Um, but we are low on some resources. So let's at least go through the economic grind. The warehouse is a good place because it can store things and we aren't very good at storing them. However, all that being said, resources from here. No, this wasn't what I wanted. Um, this was in our, not villagers tab, not buildings. I believe it was in res- Okay, here we go. We had trade routes, now resources. So this is what I wanted. So on this screen, we can sort of designate how much we want. So if I were to say I always want, let's say, 20 tools. Then I can sign up to buy them. Um, and they will just do this with merchants. Let's go ahead and say we aren't really up to these other resources yet, but we can see that we might get up to them soon. So let's go ahead and we don't really have enough wood, but let's say that, yeah, we'll sell our planks because planks are kind of an industry that we're good at. We can start to assign more woodcutters as well, I'll bet you, to make even more of them. So we'll say sell anything above, let's say like, uh, I know we're not there yet, but let's say 50 planks. Maybe that's not enough, but 50 seems like a lot. So once we get there, we'll X out of that. And then, uh, do I have a uh, woodcutter? I have two out of three woodcutter camps, camp people, but I think I'm going to just build another woodcutter camp because this is quite an in-demand resource as we go on. Um, I'll probably want a better radial spread out here, so let's start to move this away, although we are now somewhat far from that warehouse, and I am beginning to regret my overall placement. See the big picture. Did I ever play the Caesar games? Ancient Roman Sunni building with... Ah, like the, um, what is it? Caesar and Babylon and Pharaoh, is it? Aren't those the games? And Nebuchadnezzar? I've always wanted to play Nebuchadnezzar. Maybe it's because of my love of grids, but that's that would be a very good game to check out. Now that we're in the new year, I'm kind of refreshing my games list of things that we ought to check out. So thank you for saying that. I do appreciate that, Game Boy. Living is a fighting game. I, I mean, maybe it's just that this game feels too real. I never have to fight a guy uh, out of my house. Fortunately, I mean, some people do. However, that being said, like, yes, in the day-to-day -day life, most Americans and, sorry, I'm generalizing only to Americans here. Most people everywhere are constantly quietly miserable fighting the economic forces that are restraining them. And I've had enough of it. I've had enough. I've had enough. Polished stone, stone. <laughs> we could do all of one, uh, just one resource, but I suppose that since we're selling it, and then uh, let's just make stockpiles for everything. I mean, I'm not trying to say that life is a Kafka-esque nightmare, but, you know. <laughs> anyway, great segue. Let's go on with uh, new advice can be heard. Why are you still giving me advice? I have done these... Oh, it allows you to go back to the tutorial, even if you haven't... I will say that this game has a fantastic tutorial that is very non-invasive. have ten tools or more inside storage facilities. Um, well, we're buying those. I believe we are anyway. Yep, we're going to be buying those. So I'm just going to leave that for now. Now they're starting to store away all of the individual resources here. There we go. Have I played Farthest Frontier? Yes, this and Farthest Frontier are two games that come together in my mind. Although I think that um, Farthest Frontier came out after this. Although this is in early access. Which, if I'm not mistaken, I also believe that that is in early access. It's kind of puzzling to decide what is the release date of games nowadays. So let's pause, let's zoom out again, because I've been doing a lot, and I find that, I mean, I apologize for going off topic, but at the same time, I sort of feel like that this game plays itself, and it's one of those games where I can just kind of listen to a podcast in the background and just enjoy it. I will say that, like, if you, and this is something I regret about nowadays with all the Steam achievements and things lighting up in games and the world of microtransactions, like... I, I very much am a fan of self-motivated gaming, gaming for the sake of itself and intrinsic value in games. And to me, just the splendor of seeing this is quite worth it. Although I would like to have saved it from marauders at the same time, too. That would be quite rewarding. Um, like, think about getting to the Hall of Fame in Pokemon. That's so exciting. And yet there's 
there's nothing that you get. You don't get a badge online to show to your friends. And I always thought that that was such an amazing thing in a game. Yeah, like, wow. But I digress. Let's go ahead and check in and make sure that we're making money. So, yeah, now our upkeep is getting higher. We're spending money on a lot of things, so I'm going to make everyone just drastically much more unhappy. Now that you have church, I need your money. Give us your money. There we go. They have almost enough tools for that. Okay, I don't know what this means. Uh, average daily balance breakdown. Is this like... Oh, this is the budget. I thought that had to do with law and order because it was like the scales of justice. No, that was the scales of commerce. Okay. <laughs> what a funny uh, coincidence. So who the hell are you? Merchant requests... Uh... Okay, so this is a good event. Bishop is looking to build a few chapels along the pilgrimage routes. One of his merchants noticed your woodcutter camps and wants to make you an offer. Uh, are we going to be okay with this? So, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and... How much wood are we capable of storing? Storying. Storing in here. Let's go ahead and make this wood instead of tools, because I don't think we really... Uh... No, this is going to be a little weird right now, but I'm going to make this... Eh, let's just build another one. So these are quite good deals because they give you a lot of money for a very common resource. Like, oh, just give us 100 wood and we'll give you, you know, this amazing pile of gold. So we will go ahead and put another warehouse over here. Here. Oh, wait, no, we've got the other wood cutter camp there. So let's think ahead. Yes, be proactive for once and put that there. Now this will cost... Oh no, it doesn't even cost wood. It costs planks. That's amazing. Oh my gosh. Well, I haven't been this happy in years. Okay, so this will take some time. However, we have 14 days to do it and we should have enough wood by then. Tools assigned to the warehouse slot to make. Yes, indeedy. Indeed, indeed, indeed. So if we get rid of tools there, we won't get them at all. Okay, so this church be going up. And it looks like they're starting to get ready for the next part. We do have one unemployed person. I haven't really figured out exactly what makes more people come to your village. I'm guessing it has something to do with happiness accelerating it. But um, I haven't had any trouble attracting in villagers. And we haven't had a downward economic spiral. Unfortunately. But, you know, could be coming. They've also organically built all of these houses. And although it's a little bit difficult to see them, we've got some paths going on down here. Although this one looks very difficult to navigate. That's like something out of the Wizard of Oz. Um, selling wood to the bishop. Although, I am now beginning to realize that I am not entirely aware of the speed of time in this game. Because there is technically not really like a day-night cycle. I think I did that wrong. And he's going to take my money. Or what is that? Bitcoin? It's something... Instead, let's just not use our... Hang on a second, I need to just... Stop the sawing! Stop the sawing! Keep the wood. Uh, no one saw. We'll have to just remember to do that later. I am sorry, I, I need to procrastinate right now for a second. I really wouldn't want to make the bishop upset. But yeah, it does seem that we're some sort of contract village. We're, there's all these allusions to the kingdom. The kingdom! Do it for the king. Uh, I'm doing it for us, to be completely honest, because I'm living my own life. But, yeah, I mean, I'm in charge of these 20 people or so, serfs. You can start to upgrade them to commoners and things like that, but I haven't figured out how to do that yet. Yeah, like, I, honestly, the fear of an economic recession is probably the most urgent thing to me right now. So maybe this game is, like, a little bit too real <laughs> in some ways. Oh, no, recession. Oh, God. Administration. Okay, here we go. We've got the... Ch uh, no, what the hell was that? Warehouse built. Okay, there we go. Warehouse built. Hooray! Warehouse built. And it looks like we might actually have enough wood. Let's make sure that we have yet even more wood, because you can never have too much. And let's have cloth. And um, polished stone and other stuff we won't see for a little while. So let's just say... I don't know, planks, and yeah, maybe more wood, because we'll need a lot of that. Do we have more than one for stone? No, we have three wood. Uh, let's do... Nope, there's no stone nearby here. That's fine, we'll just put it there. I think we're good. 
Okay, so we've got 94. We're going on 100. I don't want to miss this quest because that is 100 gold, and 100 is a very high number. It might even be the highest. There we go. Oh, God. Newcomer is approaching. Oh, no. New people. That's an awfully long way to walk on foot. Right, we will now sell the wood to the bishop. Um, oh, so we have 100 wood. However, it is not being stored inside of our storage facilities. Much of it is, yes, here in the camp still, unfortunately. But you have now delivered so much wood so virtuously that now we have accumulated it in the storage facilities. And with only five days left, we make 100... Oh, I'm just going to call these dollars. Gold coins. Uh, clergy influence is a favorite currency earned from mandates, missions, and quests with clergy estate. It can be spent to unlock new progression content. Ah, uh, aha. So then this is sort of what gives us our, like, what I would put in quotes as research. We don't really have research in this game because it's sort of unlocked in our progression tab here. But we do have clergy progression, so we could get a monastery, and this is going to make everybody, I assume, happier in our village. Like, oh great, we live near a monastery. Amazing. Um, wow. Manor House Splendor Package. Market Splendor Package. I guess this just generally increases the splendor of the village. Farming, and a lot of these are other types of buildings, but there is quite a large technology tree here, which is why I do say take what I say with a grain of salt, because there is so much in this game. We got to about here, and the whole game goes on all the way up to here. So you could really build an entire kingdom. However, that being said, I do find that... I don't know. It, it would be nice to feel a greater sense of satisfaction after maybe like an hour. I don't know. I do find that tends to make people play the game a bit and then kind of leave it in their Steam library. Um, hmm. Mandates available at the Great Hall. Okay, so we've got promote villages to higher status. Oh, this is how I do it. Wait a second. How did I do that? Okay, let's have Gil Girlin the Builder only because I've never seen this happen. Yes, you, sir, are promoted. Needs must be once for eligibility. Promoted, have new... Wait a second, so why do I want them to be commoners? Higher status means extra revenue from taxes for... Ah, okay, so then as we tell them, you're rich, here's some money. More errands for them to keep their needs. Okay, this is not a good thing. I've made one man in my town very picky. So that's probably going to drive everyone crazy. Although, it should be interesting at least to see how his needs cause the downward spiral of the town. Let's assign some more woodcutters, because of course, as people um, raise their status, they enjoy doing more manual labor. Pious servants of the fate, that's a little ominous. Um, okay, but good. All right, oh, ring the bells. Wow, you can like change the pitch, that's kind of interesting. Uh, we oh, hey, not everybody's going to church. I won't allow that. You know, you used to be able to get arrested if you didn't go to church. There's a lot of old laws like that. Hey, JX Chin, thank you very much for the five months. Do appreciate it, JX Chin. And Fluorescent Potato. And Lottie T, thank you very much for the subs. And Wanderlust, if I missed that. Sorry about that. Um, set regions like residential and excavation sort of like... In yes, we do have those regions. Oh, let me go ahead and toggle on those uh, visibility because we do have the zones. And now I think this is going to be helpful. So here's our residential zone, yada, yada, yada. Um, I apologize, I should have shown that before. Do we have territory boundaries being shown? I might as well. We could show fertility. Nah, I don't think I'll show that all the time. Minerals. They're not rocks, Marie. They're minerals. Show the great, quote the great Hank, agent Hank Schrader. Desirability, I think we've pretty much done this more or less right. So let's just leave that as is. Territory, we don't really need to expand anymore right now. The main thing is that I will often go on a downward economic spiral and, oh my gosh, I can tax you even more. Let me make you even more unhappy than you were. So you spend money and then you collect a greater flow of money from them. That makes sense. I really want to do a wooden bridge. To where? To where? Who knows? We can get mandates from the Bailiff, though, too, which just gives us more openness to so many different progression milestones. Um, um, I just want to make sure that all of my resource flows are good. Is there a way to get a, a good... 
You know, we've got good read on our taxes. It would be nice to have a good resource flow, and that would just be like a minus five or plus five or something like that here. If it just tallied that, that would be nice. Although maybe it's intentionally obscured. Carrying on. Carrying on. Hmm. What's next? Well, we've got the reforestation, we've got the extraction, we've got that. We've got most of the tasks that we need to do. Let's go check on our villagers individually. So, who are you? You have all of your needs met, and your happiness is 75% because you're getting taxed. I happen to agree with you. My happiness is 75% since I'm getting taxed. There we go. Um, Yeah, cloth, that's fine. Wood, that's fine. Planks, it seems like we're generating a positive amount. Now, we never really seem to run out of stone, so I'm good with that. Although, I do want to get more of these things going over time, so let's go ahead and just build these ahead of time. And I know that they're very far from things, but let's go ahead and put the stone cutters camp here, and we'll build that over time. But we're also going to need a lot of gold to do the things that we're going to do. So let's go ahead, and now that we have three unemployed villagers, we're going to go over to our progression tree. We'll assign a bailiff to somebody so that we can start to get more mandates in our village. Hmm... Splendor. Now, we do want to start to increase the splendor because I think that's going to raise the prosperity overall, and that's going to just open up more general stuff. I had a military fort. I was like, do I really need this before? Because I wasn't getting invaded by people. But yeah, let's do, let's do some military stuff because that's kind of cool, right? Like conquest, hang a ding a durgan and whatnot. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll build one of those. What is, menu is this under? Now, this is under administration, which is what sort of makes me think that maybe military forts are not for actively fighting people. But, however, you can also build walls to your kingdom. So I'm just like, when am I going to get invaded by and pillaged? Let's put it on top of this hill, because that seems like a pretty cool spot to build it. Um, Training and healing of soldiers, barracks soldiers to rest. Now, I was told that Fortified Keep is the place to begin, so I think I'm just going to put this on the top of the hill. Cool spot, though. Very good decision. Very good decision. Is there really any... A balustrade. Allow access to the connected monument. Let's just do a lower gate. Because it's simple and cheap. Wooden quarters. And then we'll do it more or less like my other one, I suppose. Or do we have enough to build it? Because I don't want to spend tons of money. What else do we need? We need a roof on it. Okay, can we stack these, though? It doesn't appear that we can stack these, so let's just put a plain Jane roof on top of that. Okay, there we go. Door, roof, cube. And this increases the kingdom's splendor. Splendor earned from the most impressive buildings of the kingdom estate. This kingdom splendor plays a key role in calculating splendor rating with the kingdom estate, and is also the... I just read three words in repeat. No value limits to Splendor. There's probably some way to game this, too. Have I played Care Paradox games? Yeah, I am getting a bit of a Crusader Kings vibe from this. I think that's fair, Louis von Herman. Sorry, I'm getting very overheated. I made it back to New York, and I'm just so freaking hot for the holidays. The heat is on all the time in the house, and I'm, I have become like a true Florida man. Scales and all, you know, one with the gators, I think. Was Crusader Kings mentioned as a... Oh, no, I love CK3. I am indeed American. Here we are. Actually, no, I'm from Florida. <laughs> okay, so let's have a, a bailiff. Um, well, I'm originally from New York, but here we are. Here we are between the two. Funnily enough, a lot of people in my town kind of go back and forth. That's like a, a big hub. My lord, here is a list of mandates from which your bailiffs, or sometimes yourself, could oversee the completion. Um... President of El Okay, so we need to hire the bailiff. Okay, so what we need to go ahead and do here is we need to edit this building, and we need to create a bailiff's office. Uh, is this... Obviously, it must be the bailiff's office. Now, here's one thing where I honestly don't know if I'm doing it right. Because what do we need for the bailiff's office? We need one room and one door. So let's do something kind of minimal. Is this technically considered a room? Yeah, the gallery is technically considered a room. So let's try to build on auxiliary structures to this. Would this be enough? Is that enough for the bailiff? Yes, technically it is, surprisingly. We'll put that also on the front side. Somehow that's enough for him. 
It's kind of cool though, like, it's building Legos, you know? It is. Okay, so a bailiff I thought was the guy who swore you in at a trial. But apparently a bailiff used to do more. He's, uh, he's our residential Florida man. With the new office in place comes the opportunity to nominate your bailiff. This important villager will assist you with diverse tasks, such as prospecting, mineral deposits, courting estates, and more. So, just kind of a one-size-fits, or he wears many hats. Or she. Soldier training speed is increased. Trade price bonus from those with clergy kingdom. And this could be a very good one because we often do get contracts with them. And you're exactly the same as him. Um, I'll give it to Aldstan. Okay, what has happened? The king has noticed a military fort and wants to be sure that you, his loyal vassal, has learned have everything you need to host an army. Once armed and trained, the king expects your soldiers to contribute to the peace of the realm. So, I don't know. I will, maybe we'll send our soldiers away. This is endlessly fascinating. Or, I mean, maybe that's an overstatement here. Yeah, I'll say something like a little critical. I do wish that it would, uh... I do wish that the military or, like, the other systems came on a little bit faster. Because I'm like, this is so exciting. But I did find myself at times like, oh, I wish that this would happen a little bit faster. Because this game is truly beautiful, and I think just getting a few more of those things faster would be nice. Or just more of like a like a tension loop. Something like that. But yeah, that would be nice. Okay, let's start taxing people. So how do we... Where was that menu where I showed my villagers promotion... This I do need to find because I legitimately could not figure out how to promote my villagers. Is it in the book? View workplace, view home, follow villager. That would be a little bit creepy. Name, you could alphabetize. And they do level up in their jobs. That is quite nice to see. I suppose they get a little bit faster or something. Um, no, I legitimately can't figure out where I... This is our army, what they're doing. Beast bounty, yeah. So they sort of get contracts. Oh, so they're earning money for our kingdom. But they sort of... It seems to me as though the soldiers do sort of what the migrants do by going off the map and going on quests. I personally would like it if they did some things around here. Stay home for a while. Hmm. Okay, we still don't have enough... Uh, privilege? What is it? Prosperity. In order to... <laughs> privilege. We still don't have enough of it in order to be able to finish off our, uh, in order to be able to unlock those later requirements. I don't think that the, U the UI is a mess. I don't think that the UI is a mess. I think it could just use a little bit more of it on screen. Um, although I do like the way that it start of, sort of starts to appear. And the other thing that I will say is it would be nice if a little bit more of it were kind of graphical because it seems like a lot of numbers which is not easily readable all the time. So in that, I do kind of, um, I do kind of sympathize with that. Um, assigning the bailiff, assigning, we've built the bailiff office, but yeah, like straight busting on a stack, as, as the Gen Z says, as the Gen Z says. Okay, now we've got, to, oh, no, alas, we have 50 out of 50 wood. Oh, because I never assigned a transporter to this. Whoops a daisy. How uncultured of me. Hmm. Yay, Verily. A very cozy game. Assigning the bailiff. Now, you, why are you taking so... Oh, because we need to assign more builders. Well, we already have three out of three. I suppose we could start to spend more of our people's lives on being builders. Although, what fun would that be? I don't think we need two transporters here, though. Well, let's... Isengard, or whatever your name is... Eason turd. You are a soldier now. Instead of whatever you were. I'm going to let your dreams be dreams. Don't do it. Mandates available at the Great Hall. Oh, amazing! Promote villagers to higher status. Okay, so this is... I am confused about this. Promote villagers to higher status. Yeah, like, I would like to do this with more people. But then they need goods and food. I mean, they already have food. Comfort, must rest under a roof. So they have those too. So they'll be 66% happy. Let's start to promote them because we're going to need a lot more money. Okay, that, I probably just caused some sort of population disaster akin to what's going on in Japan. Um, 
but you know, gotta start somewhere. Uh, so we're making a lot of money proportionally off of these people because these people are giving us more than half of this number. Like this ratio is greater than this ratio or lesser or whatever you mean. Yeah, they're giving us proportionally more in taxes. And look, we're not even making them as unhappy. Let's make them really unhappy and see what happens. Yep, every no one deserves that much happiness. But you can see, though, that you make them proportionally so much more unhappy if, like, you know, I'm not going to complain so much if you... <laughs> this is so real, this game. I'm sorry. It's just so real. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, let's go back to Axe Lady with her weird wrist. She looks strong. Mm, I'm looking for a woman like that. Tough, you know? We could pick things up and put them down. All right, there we are. Okay, we've got the bailiff office. Man <laughs> mandate. Prospect mineral deposit. Uh, don't don't shame me for my tastes. Don't shame me for my tastes. I like that. <laughs> I am so sorry. Where is the mineral deposit? Oh, this is a mineral deposit. Oh, look, it's just a bunch of green. Look, it's Soylent Green in here. So what is this? What is this? Mineral deposit? Why would I want to do that? Mandates for the bailiffs. I don't really think that's worth 100 gold coins. We'll leave it there as an option. And where is the village? <laughs> there is the village. There it is. <laughs> oh, our village. We are very isolated and we don't... But look, at has anyone... Oh my gosh, they've started to create paths hither and thither. You can follow this one all the way to the edge of the map. So this is how people are getting in our town. This is the type of game that really makes me want to create YouTube thumbnails. It's just very beautiful. Yeah, hand-related labor. Oh my gosh, I can't believe how good that woman must be at it. This one is putting way too much hip into this motion, though. Look at the way she's just tapping her feet. Hello there. She could have put this at such a more ergonomic angle. She's going to create so much back pain in the future for herself. No. Why would you do that? Yak Blue, thank you very much for the sub. I do appreciate that, Yak Blue. These people are going to need a chiropractor. What are the st Okay, only because just I have endless curiosity about that. How do you animate? No, come back here. Show me how you've been working. What? Okay, this man. Let's. Well, I may not be a sports doctor. Uh, see, this seems like good form. I mean, he may be clipping through the stone, but, you know. That's. Sometimes that's the way it is. Okay, what does the neckbeard guy do? Oh, no, he's just. Okay, let's critique his box. Oh, my gosh. Okay, see, it's totally off center. He should put it over his shoulder or his head. Well, I mean, it would still be off-center, but, you know, not as bad as what he's doing. Bruh, don't lift from the upper back. You, you gotta lift from the lumbar. Okay, it's like, what are you doing in there? All right. Later. Live your life. Live your life. I am working. <laughs> what a completely not suspicious <laughs> status to have. <laughs> Um, one thing you get is that this game has a lot of these types of menus, and I'm just going to bring up a million of them right now. Uh, I don't really know if I like this. I feel like that there might be a slightly easier way to show that, but at least you can bring up a lot at once. Although, I now f that took me a little while to figure out. You just have to kind of mash escape to get those out. But yeah, like pro gamer tip. Um, okay, so mandate gain influence with one estate, and now I believe we are getting to about the end of where I was. Wow, we've made so much progress in only one hour. Mandates. Mandates. Okay, progression. Oh no, we have to go directly to the bailiff's office. Is he standing outside of there? No, we could find him, but let's just select the mandate. Gain influence with one estate. Okay, he just slow. He quickly came out. Like Marlin from Finding Nemo. Or like Nemo from Finding Nemo. Hmm. Alright, so you are the bailiff. 
I didn't think I had assigned you, Mary Elda. Well, whatever. Hmm. No quest right now, no village aspirations right now, and I've uh, given off on doing advice. So you can have it kind of hold your hand. I guess one thing I'm wondering about is how is it different on different maps? You know, like, I feel like I've made more or less the same type of village as I had before. So I'd kind of be curious as to how does it change playthrough to playthrough, map to map. Now we have all these amazing map building tools, but how does it change, I wonder? Um, forbidden land. Um, wooden bridge. We don't really need the wooden bridge yet, I think. We do require 20 of these. Ooh, we're getting very, very close to getting the next level of prosperity. Uh, we should probably raise the splendor of everything. That would be good. Although, edicts and privileges, we don't really have that. We have more newcomers approaching the village, so we'll probably get our population up. I'm wondering if it's going to be worth it to put the money into these things. Um, provision barrels, green market tent. No, I wanted to get, like, a fishery and stuff like that. I think the common path is quite valuable, though. Wooden bridge. Let's just raise our population, and then we'll see it happen. 23, 19. And also, how is this lowering or raising this blender? Oh, or maybe this is for our commoners, and we're eventually going to need this. So perhaps I should do this right now. Yes, let's have it. It's only 25 gold. Rustic Tower, Weather Vane, let's just build all of it. And now this is on... Wait a minute, what was that on? That was for our manor house. Okay, so then this is our manor house. So then let's edit it and make it more impressive and expensive, right? Hmm. What's my village name? Fine Dining and Breathing. I genuinely don't know what our village... What is our village name? My village! Nope. Fine dining. And breathing. Because I forgot. Uh, fine. And breath. Oh, you know what we could do? And thank you, SpongeBob, for this amazing quote, which will live on forever. Fine dining and breathing. There we are. Lord Unknown. I like that name. Lord Unknown. I have requested an audience with Lord Unknown. <laughs> nope. Lord Unknown. <laughs> I like that. I genuinely, I think it's very funny. Um, man, I think all of my own jokes are very funny. What is it going to be like when I finally play games with another amazing, funny person after this? I can't even think of what it will be like. I've done a lot of solo stuff lately, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> Let's continue. Let's keep on that route. Now, we do need to continue with free build. We don't want to do that. Tax office, we've already got. I guess treasury will naturally need next. Because I didn't really get much up to this part. But, come on, show me what is it. We need one more room. Oh, this increases the splendor. But then it becomes more expensive to maintain. So, as we get more expensive, everything gets more ma ex expensive. That looks extremely expensive. That's... Let me just bring out... Is this getting too real for you? I don't play games to forget about how nobody has anything. Oh my gosh, that fits there so perfectly, except that the roof sloping makes no sense. We'll build it anyway. The splendor is rising. Wow. Look at how nice that is. Oh my gosh, they upgraded the house without me even asking them to. Why do they do that? Occupants, six out of six. Is this the commoners? Oh my gosh, there's so many negative signs and red colors. I'm overwhelmed. I should probably promote more of you to commoners so that you start to upgrade your livelihoods. Although maybe we'll just leave a lower class because we can't have some sort of population implosion. I feel like an economist. You guys watch that channel, Economicus, Economics Explained. I like that channel. I like his Australian accent. That's very nice. I feel like we're out on safari when I'm watching him. Hmm. In the outback. We're at the steakhouse. Let's get farming because I like the way that it looks, and I think it's pretty. And we'll get fishing because I haven't seen it, and it seems like a convenient source of food. Um, food production is here, so we will have a fisher's hut. Oh, God. Really? No, I wasn't, I wasn't prepared for this. Part of the building is in water. Oh, no. Um, did I put the wrong part of the building in water? To be fair. Which part is supposed to be in water? Okay. 
Let me make sure I did this right. Alright. While I think that's nonsense, because isn't one of the piers supposed to stretch out into the water? I don't know, this placement just seems somewhat picky. Wait, wait, I just had it a minute ago. I swear to God, I just had it. I had the money! Please let me put down the fishery! Please! Okay, there, I'm not changing it again. Build. Phew! Sheesh! Done. Oh, look at it! Beginning! That is really nice! I had a friend who had this job, he had to put the stilts into the dock. Oh my god, this destroyed your body, this type of job. Australian YouTubers have a... You guys don't like the Australian voice. I find it relaxing. I f think it sounds like we're going surfing. Probably to other internationals, when they hear my voice, they think it sounds like I'm there in New York. Or I don't know. Some people find it entertaining. I believe that's... Who is it? Jay Schlatt. Jay Schlatt it seems to me to have a New York accent, and I think he's quite a good content creator. Um, anyway... Yeah, that was funny. Like, when I first started a channel, I thought, no, there's nothing really distinctive about an American accent, but there are certain dialects that are quite pleasant to listen to. Like the Southern... Uh, a lot of people think that the Southern accent is just ridiculous, but, like, there is, uh... A lot of it is very calming to listen to, in my opinion. Anyway, un <laughs> here I go with all my quirky, uncommon opinions again. Um, let's go ahead and put our... We're going to need some room for these farming areas, so let's put this maybe by the shore. And I'm thinking that this is close enough to our villages that, yeah, we could just place this here. And then we'll have the windmill maybe on the hilltop. British and you love the Southern American accent? Hmm. Really? I always thought that, uh, I don't know. I always thought that people thought very negative. Maybe it's because of the era in which I grew up, though. You know, like uh, the Iraq War and everything like that. That people sort of became highly critical of whatever it is. Well... Am I getting a little too real for you here? Yeah, it was it was very much like uh, like ignorant American for a while. I still think it, it very much has that, though. It depends on the person you ask for. Ask. I wonder how these people would speak if they were from a country. Speaking of which, does this game really have any setting? The world may never know. All right, we are running out of money. Uh, okay, we are going to push you to the limit of your unhappiness with taxing you, because a negative 86%, that sounds totally acceptable to me. And let's go ahead and see if we can start to promote more of our villagers. So, this is a confusion. I don't really understand why we need to wait 30 days to promote people to higher status, but I guess that's like the rounds of promotion. And since I'm starting to see that people pay more and that becomes unavailable, I could see how this could be spiralingly bad for us economically. Let's also check and make sure that we're earning money. We might have to take some expenses off. And this is where this is where I find that this game's gameplay loop, this is where I was a little bit stuck on. And I'm kind of curious as to how we'll wiggle our way out of this. Because look, I'm taxing them as much as I would care to. I don't want to go to red, because generally red is when, you know, all hell breaks loose. Uh, maybe not, maybe as an, as an American I find my own accent boring. Um, last month negative 46, this month negative 38. The tax office is producing 83. But our trade... Okay, so here's what's happening is we're buying too many tools, I think. Who knows what miscellaneous is? Territory's not that bad. Construction. So, yeah, obviously if we don't construct everything... So we'll kind of take a break from construction here for a little bit. So let's just cancel this. Uh, destroy the building. I'm pretty sure that just cancels the construction. We can get started on these farms right now, but yeah, we don't want too much more maintenance. And we are out of money. We are out of money. We can have negative money, I believe. Yes, we can. That is right. Um, oh no, we have negative money. Uh, um, I actually have no answer to this. This is just purely bad. So let's go ahead into our trade and we'll see our resources. So what are we producing a lot of? We have a lot of wood. Are we able to export that? Um, I'm going to go ahead and say, let's assign another carpenter so that we could start to sell more of that. For some reason, I don't think we were selling much wood. 
when I tried to assign this before. I don't know why if I was doing it wrong. But yeah, it just seemed to me... We will attempt to. Let's see if we could sell anything above, like... Let's say, I don't know, 250. Start there. That seems like a pretty decent place to start. Um, what else is there? We aren't up to these... Oh my gosh, but though new resources have appeared. Were these there before? I feel as though they weren't. Never promoted enough villages. Yeah, Frozen frozen Tomato. I agree with you. Excellent name, by the way, Frozen Tomato. Um, but yeah, like, a shame if something were to ever happen to my tomatoes. But yeah, I, I found that I, I couldn't promote them fast enough. So let's just make the peasants completely miserable. Negative 114% happiness. We could cause the massive spiraling breakdown of happiness in our society. But what does that really mean for us? I mean, happiness, I think, just means... What does happiness mean to me? Taxes. The so villagers' residence is being, has been taxed. Oh no, alas. Fluctuate over time and lowering residential will progressively improve their mood. Does that just make them faster or more efficient? But it's like we need the taxes to make them happier. And then, I mean, though, I guess that this is kind of a, a too much of a real world paradox. Um, Hang on a second. I want to see if I can get those taxes visible. Parts list. Building overview. Is it under building overview? Hmm. Uh, I don't honestly remember how to display this because I don't get overlay tooltip. No, I think I had that before. Um, I'm just going to accept this. I haven't really gotten too much onto ratifying edicts yet. Planting decorative bushes, though, will bring up everybody's mood. Let's accept another villager because, of course, this place is so extremely sustainable. Um, Kraken Peace, Priest also. Thank you very much for the prime. Good to see you, Kraken Priest. Trade route. Oh, thank you very much. So the trade routes will actually show us what resources we can sell. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Patre. Patre, thank you very much for that tip. I did not know that. Okay, so we are able to sell not wood. Hmm. Interesting. So we aren't actually able to... We're able to sell planks. They will also take berries, although we're pretty much eating all of our berries. Let's also take gold, although many of these resources we can't really get. Let's go ahead and have our bailiff prospect that... Where was the thing? Yeah, way over there. Maybe we could buy this territory over here. Is this even territory? Or does it show us only... Maybe it shows us only adjacent territory. So here's what I'm thinking. I may have made a big mistake here. Whoa, I know. I thought I was perfect, but... It seems to me, because I was trying to figure this out, because I do believe that you can take over this entire map and make a massive kingdom, which is quite motivating, actually. However, um, we, we didn't do a very good job at that, so we're going to need to branch our way out until we get to this mineral deposit. So this is going to cost 250 coins, so that's very expensive, and we aren't really making that much. But yeah, I would have liked to have sidled my way over to that resource so that I could have prospected it, and maybe that was some green gold. Oh, is there one across the river as well? Oh, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, that would be a very much better place to go. Unfortunately, it doesn't include... <laughs> so I still need to do two in a row. Though maybe we'll make that the goal. That could be a, a decent goal, I think. Yeah, get a bridge going over there. Maybe we'll get that like by the end. It looks like we have two mineral deposits there as well. So that's nice. Um... Decorative bushes will, I believe, make everyone a little bit happier, increase increase the prosperity or something like that. But I need to now just know how to destroy everyone's happiness and make them pay more. I mean, I don't see any consequences to this, so let's just tax them a lot. Okay, right, you've got strong enough wrists for that. Enjoy your hand pain. It's validating to your struggle. Enjoy it while it lasts. So I'm thinking also, though, that probably the best way to do this is just through trade. So now that we know that, thank you very much for that tip on the trade routes. I did not know that. So let's go ahead and see. We are able to sell berries, which are worth not really that much money. Unfortunately, planks are not worth that much either. Um, herbs would be good. Herbs, wine, and gold. Obviously, gold is good. But let's see how we make... How do we make wine? 
It's quite good. I mean, if we could get more of this going, then we wouldn't have to tax our people so much. Beer production. Uh, still okay, stonemason's hut. So we do have a lot of stone, or we're able to make it. I think polished stone seems like a decent way to make yet even more money. So let's do that. Um, goods market. And this would make our other villagers much happier, but I think that the stonemason's hut seems like a more reliable way to begin. Let's go ahead and do this. Um, we do have quite a lot of wood, so let's sell some of that. That's going to give us a lot of gold, and then I think we can just pretty much do that. Yep, confirm delivery, and we make 100, and we get a better reputation with the king. So it's mostly like, I feel as though at this point we've seen the primary gameplay loop, which is like economy, economy, grind, 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 then like sell to the king, sell to the king. So it's more of a laid back type of thing, but I'm kind of curious as to whether we're going to hit any bottlenecks now or whether we'll start to experience exponential growth because I think it would be exciting to see a bunch of new houses start to come up and fill up this entire landscape. That would be quite cool, even if we don't have our military um, sort of like boyish toy soldier type of traditional you know, I, I, I mean, I stand by that. I really do like finding games where it doesn't have to be about fighting in the end, although it often just is fighting. Yeah, very much. I believe that there is no fighting in Banished, too. And Banished was a big hit with people, but uh, that also came out at the time when, um, like, there wasn't just a huge number of games out. I think that people sometimes think of that when they look into it. Because if Banished came out nowadays, I don't think it would have made as much of an impact on people's impressions of it as it did. Just something I kind of bring up. Although, I don't know, fact check me on that, I, I think. I just remember Banished being much older, right? Wasn't Banished much older? I mean, when, when I say much older, I mean like 2010 would have been the Precambrian era for indie gaming. Because that was sort of when digital downloads were coming into vogue, or at least as I remember them. Uh, stuff like Super Meat Boy, um, uh, Braid, Binding of Isaac shortly after that, the original one. I think, believe that was 2011? Was that 2011? Well, now seems like a great time to buy a decorative bush, if there ever was one. Hmm, administration. How do I have that decorative bush? Oh, because I didn't get it in the progression tab. There we go. Okay, see, so we will do 50. It seems to be worth 50 decorative stuff so that we can get this message off of my mind. If nothing else, I will also say that I have not used these tutorial messages, but when I was playing as a single player, that's kind of a good way to guide you through the game, even though you don't have any sort of urgency. But it's sort of like on playthrough 2, am I really getting to any sense of urgency? So, yeah, fair. Mandates available at the Great Hall. Okay, great. Never want to miss one of those. So gaining influence with an estate. I am confusion. So what is the difference between labor? What are these things all technically called? Kingdom estate, labor estate, and clergy estate. So what does this do? Influence. Labor influence is a favor currency earned from mandates, missions, and quests with the labor estate. It can be spent to unlock new progression content with the labor... Blah, blah, blah. Naturally decrease toward the influence cap. Okay, so that makes... I guess that's negative one. <gasps> labor splendor is earned from the most impressive buildings of the labor estate. It's a little bit to me here. Trying to figure this out. It seems to me, like, I feel as though some of this could be simplified into one rating. Because it's pretty, but I'm confused. But I can't tell if I'm just a smooth brain. You know what I mean? Although, I mean, to be fair, when I first saw games like CK3, I was also like, there are so many different things, but it is pretty much simplified into systems. Um, yeah. Splendor 2... Minus no okay, so the calculation is we get to negative one by Splendor two minus non-exclusivity penalty. I wonder what that means, non-exclusivity. Whereas this is uh, what is the exclusivity rating though? Exclusivity plus privilege of the land. I mean, I guess we'll just build more because to me it seems like by having more of that thing. 
I am legitimately confusion. I mean, if I were playing this single player, I didn't prepare this part on stream, so I don't really know what I'm talking about. But yeah, I don't want to, like, learn the entire system. Let's just see what happens when we go ham on building more of that stuff. So let's, let's see, selecting men. Oh, uh, no, not that. If I edit this estate to put all the things on that gave me that splendor, that will raise the Mr. Gold splendor. Most impressive building. So if we have that, everyone's like, oh my gosh. There's a rustic roof chimney on the side of that. Requires to be attached. Isn't it attached, though? Let's try a weather vane. Requires to be attached. Hmm. Slightly sus. Where is it? Oh, a wall fountain, of course. Good old wall fountain. Yes, we'll put that right there. And how much will that increase? So we gotta pay more money for it. But hopefully that will bring us up from negative one, because we never like to see a negative number. Focus more on labor, for example. Kingdom and clergy influence would decrease. Oh, I see. So pretty much, like, you gotta pick one. And you can kind of go all ham on just clergy or something like that. Am I reading that right? Oh, so it's sort of like each one is an opportunity cost, if I'm understanding you right. Yeah, there's, there's got to be a way to game that system. Okay, I was a bit of a smooth brain there, but it seems like that's very exploitable and, like, very gameable. That That is quite nice, although... You know, I wasn't really prepared for a learning curve since I feel like so much else is very accessible. But yeah, that system seems to be a bit out of whack with how... I mean, <laughs> look at the, how much we're taxing them. Uh, we need 20 shirts to unlock this route. So now we do have a stonemason set. Let's figure out our gold problem. Um... Hmm, what else do we have? So we're missing cloth because we're just not making it. So let's have polished stone here so that they can do that. And then we're going to go ahead and say... Mm, economy, no resources. Here we go. I want to get the trade going. And I want to make sure that once we get this polished stone... Let's say anything over like 30 they sell. So now it seems to be only one boy working on the polished stone. Hopefully that will be enough. Do you spend all of this time? So you're polishing, you're polishing. Oh, sorry, it's a girl, not a boy. There we are. They all ha sort of seem to have the same vague age. I would put them at, like, 32. Big Landmarks have a zone of control, kind of. One thing that is very nice, though, is that now this is starting to look very full of grandeur and splendor. I think I'm going to tell them to not reforest this spot right here. So let's say, you know, I like the trees, but let's just have a, a zone for our main building. Oops, uh, no, that's not what I meant. Don't reforest down here on the ground. Give them space to walk. Mm, yes. <laughs> I just had one of those mm, yes moments. Mm. You know the, the, the meme of the guy saying, yeah, of course you do. Of course you do, of course you do. There we go. I mean, it looks weirder now, my zones. We aren't really at that Airbnb symbol anymore. But yeah, there we are. Enacting an edict. Uh, mandates available at the Great Hall. Promote villagers. I suppose we should just keep promoting our villagers, because why not get them all on the same page about everything? Um, we can't promote them all, and everyone is just horribly unhappy. Just give me your money. There we are. Good. Okay, now let's see what happens if the entire population implodes. Now, I will say that at this point, I did start to feel kind of a bottleneck with the game. Um, I've made a few, like, pointed things. Although, I think that so much about this game is beautiful that kind of speaks for itself. So, I tend to be a little overly critical. Um, but that being said, yeah, I feel like it does kind of slow down a bit. And, like, what should I be doing? Clicking and clacking with my mouse here. And let's also see, how are, are we making any money anymore? 368 a month because of making everyone horribly unhappy. Has anyone left? Now, I've not noticed anyone leave the village. So, so far we're doing good. Um, the tax office has earned 240. Let's see if we can get a, a close-up of that tax collector. Hello? Give us your money? Expands the treasury. Select mandate. Not what I was looking for. Parts list. Parts list. Maybe it's on that. Tax office. Tax office. Hmm. Myriada. 
Marielda, whoops. There we are. The splendor and the grandeur. Was this how I... Ah. Yeah, I wish that this tax overlay, because I can't see our... I'm just going to have to click house to house, but that wasn't under my visibility menu. But it doesn't seem as though any house is filling up with taxes and is just ripe for the opening to the money. Imagine if somebody just came through the ceiling to collect your taxes. Can you imagine how inefficient that would be? Like, Santa Claus actually going to each house. I tried to work this out when I was a kid because I was very technical as a thinker, but also I thought that Santa... Like, how could he come to every house? So I thought he would make clones of himself because he was magical and he was capable of that. And so then that would be how he would put presents in all of the houses. And that satisfied me as an explanation. Until I was, I would say, the regrettably old age of 12. Which, when I figured out that the Tooth Fairy was not real because I, one night, was like, Aha! When my mom, <laughs> when my mom came in with, like, two dollars because I lost my tooth. Uh, that was when I started to suspect things about Santa. And from there, that was when I knew I started worshipping the flying spaghetti ma monster. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen... It has been that way ever since, and the flying spaghetti monster has... <laughs> what is wrong with me? Oh my gosh, I forgot to do something very important here. Hey, hey, you dingus. Farmers! Farmer Joe. Oh no, we put the bakery directly on top of the farmland. Nope, don't do that. Destroy it. There we are. All right, we'll put the bakery somewhere less regrettable. Yes, the wheat fields, the wheat fields. Now, is this the wheat fields? I don't actually say wheat, I just think it sounds funny. In my American accent, I say wheat. <laughs> oh, God. Build. Only because it takes so much, it takes a whole village to create a single loaf of bread. But think about how good artisanal bread is once you find it. If you have that near where you live. Which side is the front? This is so ambiguous. We'll just leave it there. I do like how you can plan the building, though, even if you don't have any money. Money! One commoner left. Doing what? Uh, uh, wait a minute. What are you up to? Wait, are they leaving because they're so unhappy? In which case, if we had a downward population spiral... Oh my gosh, that would be such an amazing way to end the game. Are we losing people? Wait a second, are we losing people? I didn't know if this is a thing. In which case, we have to lower the taxes. Is this- I know they're all leaving, this is so sad. Um, okay, yeah, they seem to be very unhappy. Uh, are they leaving? I have not explicitly seen that. Yep, they- they left. Yeah. Hey, you dingus. Okay, no, uh, I'm- I'm kidding. I was kidding about the high taxes. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh no, we seem to have found the downward top uh, population spiral. Although I have found the conflict of the game that is quite satisfying, if that is the case. Um, I never reached this part of the thing because the tutorial did not make this very clear to me. But yeah, it seems that we are currently undergoing a massive downward spiral in our population. No, we don't pay. It's okay. Everything's fine. Please come back. Oh, no. Well, as clearly there are more of them. Well, well, what are you doing? What is your name, miss? We can't actually mouse over her anymore because I think that she's leaving the village. Where would you go? She's wearing a toga. Well, it's not a toga, but it's basically a toga. You have nothing. Wolves, elephants, tigers, anything could ambush her. She doesn't know what's out there. Okay, I thought that meant that there was one commoner left. This makes sense to me now. Now the commoners are beginning to leave. Okay, now we are undergoing the massive Japanese downward population spiral. Okay, so let's be very careful with this. We have to lower taxes. No, everyone, free! Free. Green. Free. It's Everything's fine. Stop leaving. Stop leaving now. We still haven't milled all of the flour either. We just won't have any money. Oh no. There they go. 
Ah, uh, they'll be back. They'll be back. Right click the coin icon. Uh, yeah. Oh, can you right click? Ah, oh, thank you. That was good. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Like, it would have been nice to have a visibility overlay. But thank you very much, Silver Glaceon. Also a beautiful Pokemon, Silver Glaceon. Um, okay, so this has actually got quite real, and I find that somewhat entertaining. So we've undergone a massive downward population spiral of two people, although they're happier now, right? Stay. Stay. Okay. If you really like Microsoft Excel and financial planning, and maybe you're like some sort of stock trader, you might enjoy this. Um, put this on your resume. Honestly, not gonna lie right here, the people I've met who are very cool, who enjoy my channel, are like engineers and doctors and stuff like this, so I wouldn't be surprised if this were up many of your alleys, or some of you guys are like software engineers or something. Very cool job. If I weren't a YouTuber, I would be doing one of those things, too. But I don't know. Cool jobs, nonetheless. Um, let's see. Trading negative 70. Although I couldn't be a doctor. I can't take care of people. <laughs> um, good luck. <laughs> uh, trade tools. Upkeep. It's really just the tools trade that's so expensive. Okay, let's stop getting so many tools. And that will probably cause the massive degradation of our... Well, our everything, but then let's just see what happens if we get rid of that. Okay, don't buy that. No, don't buy that. No trade. Bad deal. Bad deal. I think we were using it only in new constructions, but I may be wrong about that. Um, yes, a financial analyst. Stonks. Stonks. Who moved over there? Oh, you dingus. Okay, now I somewhat regret spreading out the entire population area. I thought that they wouldn't move away from everyone to try to get away from it all, but now we've made things so much more inconvenient for our tax collector. Look, they're just... These people are pooping out gold coins in here. How do they get the gold coins if... Okay, gain influence from one estate. I don't believe that we need that so much. No, we have very good prosperity. It's really just the, um, the gold flow that we need to get. Let's keep an eye on that, though. Budget, taxes, taxes. No, I want to see flow. Budget. Mainly just due to construction, then. Okay, so let's uh, focus on constructing things that will make us money here. I personally think that polished stone was a great idea, and I think that... Are we making money from that? Is there a way to see what our flow is with that? Production, construction, manage and book. Yeah, let's see it. Polished stone, we aren't going above 30. It seems as though they're selling it whenever they get enough, right? Track. How do we track the resource? Oh, that's kind of convenient. I didn't see this on the UI. Stockpile or track. That's good. But I'm thinking that probably the best of all the goods then to trade. Let's see if we can get this. Where was it? Logs. No, it wasn't under logs. Army. No. Common path. Edicts and privileges. No, where was it? Under... Trade routes, here we go. So I think that the most lucrative item here is going to be, well, wine. But if not wine, gold ore is also very expensive. So how would we make wine? Let's go ahead and just consider that for a second. Is it very easy? Otherwise, I have an idea about gold. Mm, no, we need to go to progression milestones. Okay, so if we want to do, I'm assuming that this is going to be under common path. Clothing, I guess this is for goods to make everyone happier. We could get the clothing boy going. That way we would make everyone happier and we could tax them more. Or we could just go straight to the... Let's just send them into the mines. I am personally of the opinion that mining gold sounds like a fun way to get them rich. And I'd like to see how this prospecti prospecting, prospecting thing works too. Let's go ahead and do that. Although that's going to be very expensive also. Could we take out a loan? And we're also running out of money. Okay, we need you to pay more. A little bit. So far, you haven't left. But that's not really even that much money at this point. Okay, we need more of your money, commoners. So then in that case, let's go ahead and get clothes. I fear as though I could overextend quite easily in this game. Oh my god, no. Sheep farm. There must be another way. Can't we grow cotton or something? Oh, they're growing in the fields and it's causing little cottons to come up. That's kind of nice. Although we haven't even finished our entire farming workflow, which is... Now this is... Yeah, this is what I mean, is that we're going to horribly overextend. 
No, we do have three people unemployed, so I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. Let's put it right in the middle of this forest. Because as you know, sheep love the forest. Weaver hut. There's so many buildings that are required on these things. Let's put that there. Uh, and we ran out of money again. <laughs> I am somewhat sad. Well, let's have somebody, somebody at least be a miller. We have one farmer. He's sort of growing the wood. Do we really need this many transporters here anymore? I don't, I think we need only one. Because we just need more people producing the resources rather than carrying them around. Okay, here we go. Now we can get the weaver hut. Yes, good. Mandates available at the Great Hall. New advice can be heard. No, I don't want... No, of course not. I will continue on my own then. Yes, we've got a field for farming. There it is. Hmm. Let's go ahead and do... Tailor's workshop. So then this will cost another 50. Two common clothes in exchange for one cloth. Employs surf. But at least we can just get the cloth out of the sheep. Because I thought we would have to do it through cotton, and then we would have to plant the cotton. It'd be interesting to see if farms can do a little bit more versatility. Hmm. I'll put that there. And we'll have, we'll have 50 gold in no time. Pay me more money. Oh, look, there we are. We're already up to 25. Sheep farm built. Good. Oh, only one shepherd is required. Oh, we could have the little sheeps. That, all I'm saying is that would be nice. That would be nice. And maybe the bread will feed everyone. And look, everyone's not so pissed off anymore. <laughs> they were pretty angry at me. Hmm. Okay, so to summarize, also too, because I know, I'm aware that this could be somewhat dizzying, especially to anyone coming into the stream. Blue is extraction zones. So we're telling them to get the trees out of here. I, although, we never seem to run out of trees. Like, we don't deforest an area, so not really a big worry. Uh, but that also designates stones as well as berries. Green is our housing area, which our villages sort of organically do for themselves, so they've kind of built up along the slope here. Personally, I think that's the most innovative and interesting part of this game, is how just the whole village develops. Um, the, the farm over... Ah, that's nice. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Good animations there, too. Just very relaxing. Like, if someone did something horrible to me and then I played this game, I would feel very relaxed. Uh, <laughs> I secretly often think that about not only this, but many of the kind of more accessible side of games on this channel. Like, if somebody punched me in the face and I had to come home and find something to <laughs> feel relaxed, I'll just turn on foundation. Then I'll have a good time. Oh, and we can employ another carpenter, and then everything will be fine. That's good. Then we can sell more of those logs, make more money. Get more woodcutters there. Yes. Get them all out of unemployment and stop the implosion of our economy. We barely have enough food. Oh, we've run out of people again. Oh, uh, no. Stop being a lumberjack. Go away. There we are. Be a weaver. Psychologist. Thank you very much for the prime. Is it kind of like, eh, I feel like City of Skylines you could compare to so many other games. Sure, fair enough. I mean, if you grab, or like a medieval one, uh, though it's gridless too. Though City of Skylines is sort of mysteriously gridless as well. I mean, uh, if we're going far but that back, I would say Sim City. Fair, fair. Oh my gosh, the bakery is expensive as hell. The one thing I'm wondering, though, is, like, will I reach a point where I have no more money for all the maintenance costs? Because it seems as though I don't get villagers at a fast enough rate at times, and I do have fear of that. In closing, dittoing over most of the things that I said at the intro, I really feel like that this game has a lot of just, like, beauty about it, and a lot of emergent gameplay systems that are exciting to see grow and develop. But I also do kind of feel like at this point in the gameplay, in terms of, like, holding your hand at the beginning, I feel as though I do hit some bottlenecks at points, where I'm like, ooh, this could be interesting, and it's sort of like a military contract. So I'm sort of trying to figure out where is the speed at which this game sits. Um, 
That sounds a little bit, like, abstruse. Like, I feel as though I, I want more moments of greater satisfaction at times. Although, I really think that there's a lot to like here. And, like, a lot of that I've kind of just allied it over horribly. I mean, look at how the kind of emergent settlements came up and now we have to go around there to collect taxes. And I also do feel like I am kind of a smooth brain and I'm not really into optimizing. Um, but, ooh, look at that. There he goes, fishing. Just like a lot of relaxing, kind of chilled, layback city, laid back city builder stuff to like here. But yeah, like as it is in early access, I feel like that that's something that I would be interested in seeing a little bit more of, like a little bit more of tension and resolution. Because it does sometimes feel like I'm just kind of saving up for the next milestone. Although maybe you just need to wait longer in order to get the progression milestones. And I will also say that it took me three hours to get a village started the last time about to this phase. But now it's taken, I would say about an hour and a half so clearly i have gotten better at the game and we're collecting more tax money and we are going to go down another horrible population spiral downward um which it looked like we were going down because we were losing people and oh my gosh we're running out of food so there clearly are some things that are sort of survival based to go off of here <laughs> but yeah like i don't know those are kind of my thoughts and i hope that it helped you at least like learn a little bit more about the update i do think that the new emergent map or what is it not emergent map procedural generation map tool it seems to be like a very cool thing rather than just having what is it four or five static maps um so yeah i don't know check out version 1.9 if it looked up your alley but that were something you were kind of waiting on or if you're looking for a kind of a chill laid back city builder i definitely get that vibe here and i'm kind of uh i'm interested in seeing what they will do for future updates if there's going to be any like new big system or anything like that um and yeah uh taxing the heck out of my people i also think that there's a lot of kind of economic exploration to be done around here <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I, I hope to come back to, uh, Foundation at some point. And also just one I really wanted to check out. So again, thanks to Polymorph for sending over the key. Um, and yeah, happy Festivus to everybody. And, um, yeah, I guess that's a wrap.